the hour has arrived. So let's begin. If you came to the webinar, Achieving Your Optimal Health, you're in the right place. And uh, just to give you an idea of the focus of our webinar, uh, imagine living every day in your optimal health for a longer, more active and satisfying life. We're going to help you get there. We have over 15 experts from a wide variety of Las Vegas health professions. And we're offering our best wisdom on how to attain your optimal health in a number of specific areas ranging from nutrition, exercise and pain management, to skincare, weight management, mindset, and much more. And the, uh, the number of experts is growing weekly. I think we've got three more experts with us today than we had last week, and we're going to continue to multiply these experts and our knowledge till our heads are bursting and and we're we're totally healthy so uh, this this series began on june 12th it's delivered every wednesday a webinar on on health from a different uh, professional perspective and uh, 7 to 8 p.m we're going through august 28th uh, you know, health is one of my great passions, and this is why I wanted to assemble this group of experts, and and I'm I'm totally pleased with the results that that we're receiving. Uh, we're we've got two things happening in this in this health webinar. You're not only going to receive high quality health education. Uh, we've, we've got lots of education coming out our ears. Uh, you can get it on the internet. You can get it so many places. What is unique about this webinar series is that you're going to have an opportunity to picture your optimal health and to move in that direction with the support of others in the webinar. You're going to be able to name a health goal and it's something you'd like to improve in your health by the end of the series, by the end of, of August. And then, you know, work on that goal throughout the summer. Come to this series, ask questions, get support from the experts, and we want to see you achieve your health goal. So education plus action is what we're all about. We uh, we support the five pillars of health. We named five pillars of health when we began this webinar. And let's see, let me, um, if I can just grab that screen, I'm going to give it back to you, Gus, in a, in a moment. But I just want to bring us back to the place that we began we're looking at health no matter you know who's speaking what perspective we're looking at health in terms of your physical health your mental health your emotional health social health and spiritual health gus will be speaking tonight in in his area of posture he's going to be letting us know how posture affects all these areas of our health. And we're going to keep this, this large range of, of um, just the areas that are affected by making health changes and what represents total health. So today's webinar is what does your posture have to do with achieving your optimal physical health? And today you're going to learn how to increase athletic performance, address chronic pain, and improve functionality by focusing on your posture. And imagine if you could do those things, how that would affect these five areas that are on the screen in front of you. So knowing where you stand when it comes to the state of your physical health may be as simple as knowing how you stand. At a time when there are many complex professionally administered health assessment tests, Available, Gus Vargas offers a simple test you can take yourself in the comfort of your home, an assessment of your posture. 
In this webinar, you're going to learn what impact does posture have to do on your physical health? How does posture impact chronic pain, functionality, and athletic performance? What is fascia and what role does it play in posture? What items can stress your posture? And what actions can be done to improve posture? And we hope that those who attend can see benefits as a result of tonight, such as to use posture as an objective method of analyzing your physical health. How great is that? To discover issues before they become painful, impactful, and expensive, allowing proactive physical medicine. Retain your quality of life as you mature and improve your athletic performance. Would these be great benefits? That's what we're looking for tonight. I, and, and now I want to introduce Gus. He's, uh, he used to be an IT project manager at a well-known casino game manufacturer in Las Vegas. He enjoyed his job, but to stay healthy and to manage stress, he did boot camp at 6 a.m. He did this for six years straight until an injury prevented him from continuing. This really negatively impacted his quality of life and started his 18-month journey to get it fixed. Even after a year of massage, 10 chiropractic sessions, three months of physical therapy, and visiting an orthopedic surgeon, he still was unable to get back to working out. While at Zion, Utah, during a trail running event, he bumped into a company called Structural Body Therapies. After explaining his problem to the owners, he felt they could help him out. He and his wife took the seven hour drive to see them in Ogden, Utah. And to his amazement, they did in three days what he couldn't do in 18 months. So impressed with the therapy was he that he quit his corporate job and opened a local clinic of structural body therapies for Vegas. Gus and his team are now helping Las Vegans get pain-free, functional, and performing better athletically using only natural methods. And so, you know, Gus has been on the front line. This worked for him, and now he wants to make it available to others. And that's a real good combination for someone who is, uh, is a healer. And I myself am, as moderator, David Smith, am owner of a marketing company in Las Vegas, and my skill is bringing people together and helping people communicate and make important transitions that improve their lives. And so we want to see that happening tonight. So Gus, I want to turn it over to you and... Uh, and go ahead, let me give you the screen again. Just a second. Okay, go ahead and hit the share button, Gus, and take over. All right, let me go ahead and do that. All right, can everyone see that? Yes. Yep. Awesome. Well, David, that was quite the introduction, man. That you make me sound like real awesome. I hope I can live up to that expectation. Now, you turn the tables on me. <laughs> you are awesome, Gus. Well, I'm, uh, thank you for the intro. Thank you for this forum. And I, I thank you, everyone who's on the call. Um, we're a community of, of people who are actively seeking to be healthy because we understand how important that is. And what today we're going to focus on is on physical health, you know, and I mentioned this before in the last, uh, I think, uh, Denise's session that I, ha I think I have the easiest of, of all of the, all of the, the experts on, they get on, all the presenters, because uh, when we talk about the physical body, you know, we're talking about bones and levers and, you know, it's very functional. It's very easy to see how they, that operates as opposed to biological, nutritional, emotional. Those are very deep waters. So, so I, I like staying in my area because it's, it's, I think it's a little bit uh, easier to, to explain. 
So we talked about optimal, how do we achieve optimal health, right? And, uh, and as I talk about this, the big disclaimer is we're just talking about the physical body and its operation. There are a lot of things biological, emotional that will impact that. We're just going to be focusing on the physical aspects, you know, tendons, ligaments, muscles, bones, just on that. Um, just because uh, it's, it's an easier place to start at. And then as we go with the webinar, you'll see how nutrition plays a role in that. Emotions, mental, spiritual, you know, plays a role in that. So we talked about our goal, right? Uh, we want to have a target that we're aiming at to hit at in order to know, okay, if this is the goal, this are the challenges and this, these are the things we have to address, right? And we talked about uh, the one, the goal I had proposed was let's plan at a hundred years of age to be able to hold 25 pounds of groceries in both arms. All right. Does that sound fair to everyone? <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> All right. You know, I, I, I guess that'll disappoint anyone who's, tr who's aiming for 120, 130 years of age, but just to keep it simple, let's, let's do, let's do a hundred. Right. And the reason being is each one of us has very specific goals that we want to achieve. Travel. Uh, with the certain places we want to go, things we want to see, Alaska, cruises, people we want to visit, you know, things we want to do, promotion, jobs, uh, projects. We want to finish building a car. But the assumption in each of these and many of these goals, not necessarily all of them, but many of these goals is that our our bodies will be physically able to perform these actions. And unfortunately, that isn't always the case, right? So what I've become in the two years that I've been owner of structural body therapies is an advocate for the body. You know, your goals that you have, work hard to achieve them. Understand also, we also need to take care proactively of our physical bodies in order so we can sustain those goals. Right. And when we talk about this hundred year old person, this hundred year old person has some characteristics, right? They're not in pain and they have full functionality of their body, right? Pain is not necessarily a good indicator of health. There are people who are not in pain, but they can't touch their toes, can't reach the top shelf uh, in the kitchen, right? We're talking about full functionality. Right, because there's a lot of advantage to that, and we'll talk about that. Now, oops, all right, I keep forgetting to have slides. All right, let me go through these. All right, so there's the, there's, there's the goal right there. <laughs> now, so obviously there are challenges to this goal, right? And we see that all around us. You know, there are 20% of the Amer Americans are currently in chronic pain, right? Mm -hmm. And chronic pain, that's weeks, months, years of dealing with the same issue, debilitating, where their, their actions they can't perform and they have to compensate in order to protect that area that's in pain so they mm -hmm. limit their functionality. Hey, I don't want to get up because it hurts. Hey, I don't want to get out of bed because it hurts. Um, I have a gentleman that I know that uh, a colleague that uh, every month, not in pain, but every month, I don't know where his back hurts to the point that he's not able to go to work for three days. Mm. Right. That's impactful. Right. Uh, so pain is an, it, it is an issue. Joint issues. Right. If the goal is 200 to be, you know, be functional at 100 years, we need our joints. Right. And there's a lot of challenges there. There's, you know, um, we have knee, uh, joint replacement. We have loss of cartilage, right? Um, and this is impactful. And, uh, you know, these are things we want to protect in our trip to, to our goal. Also trauma, you know, you can be living a perfect life and things will happen to you, right? Car accidents, uh, falls, you're up in the ladder, you fall down, right? 
has lasting impact and limited range of motion. You know, for whatever reason, one day you notice that your shoulder just, you can't have full functionality. And if you go too fast, pain, you know, we've seen that enough times, right? Um, so what's the solution? Well, there's been new understanding on how the body operates as we go along. Um, and, and what we're going to do is put this all together and see how posture can be an overall goal that addresses a lot of issues and challenges that we come across, right? Because we want to maintain our physical performance, our human physical performance, right? It doesn't have to be phenomenal. Doesn't, you know, it's, it's reachable. Enough people do it. Right, you have centurions in China who are very active, still working, so it's very doable. So there are pathways to that. So that's what we're going to be talking about. How do we achieve that? So there are some things we do want to talk about in order to to fully understand this. And one of this is gravity. You know, you and I, we walk around all day doing our thing. But every single second of the day, there is an invisible force that is constantly operating and impacting us. And that's gravity. Right? Why is that, why is that important? Well, because of physics. You know, we're operating in this field and it has an impact on our body. Newton's third law of motion says that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Right. So here we are. We are on this planet and we are exerting a force upon it. Right. But Newton's law also says that it's imposing a force upon us. Right. So if you were to imagine, you know, we have our weight, we're being pulled to the center of the earth straight directly towards it. And were it not for the earth pushing back up to us, we would just go simply fall through and just keep going down to the, to the center. So that's why we're on top of the earth because both we're pushing down on it and it's pushing back up uh, on us, right? There's a certain balance of physical forces that will, you, the theme of balance will come, uh, we'll, we'll hear a lot during our discussion, right? And, by understanding how gravity works, it's going to help us understand what is the optical position for our bodies, right? And also how to optimally operate in this environment so that we can maximize, we can both minimize the amount of effort that we need to operate in this world and to maximize the impact we have in this world, right? Athletes are really, really good athletes understand this, right? that of this gravitational pull and will use their bodies in a way as a fulcrum to take advantage of this. All right. Impacts astronauts. They deal with less gravity and they have to manage the symptoms of being, having less impact of it. You know, we, we sometimes think as gravity is a bad thing. Um, that might not be the case. Our body expects us to operate in gravity. And when we, remove gravity from our system, there are actually some disadvantages that astronauts have to mitigate in order to operate until they return back to Earth. So another, op another under uh, concept we want to understand and talk about is tensegrity. This was a concept that was brought to us by Buckmeister Fuller. And basically what it means is it's a combination of two words, tension and integrity, right? We have a stable three-dimensional structure consisting of members under tension. And we have a picture of it here. That is actually an example of our hip and our, mm. and our leg, right? Uh, if I were to ask most people on the street is, what, what keeps your shape of your body? Most will respond that it's their bones. Where our understanding of, of how our body is held together has improved. Right? We, there is a new term, new tissue 
called fascia. It's not new, but it's op how it operates and its purpose in its body is it's still being understood. And what we're understanding is fascia is tissue that surrounds each muscle fiber from your skin all the way down to your bones, mm. right? And what's important about fascia is when we talk about bones, we talk about very local areas. Hey, I have muscles that do this. I have bicep that does this, right? Very local. But when we talk about fascia, fascia, because it's co completely connective across your entire body, it forms a 3D bodysuit and it's incredibly connective. So an so, uh, issue in one area can have an impact in another. And it holds tension in our bodies. It's like big rubber bands. So if you look at the, the Tensegrity model, that's a good way of looking how our body operates. Right? It's like fascia is, fascia is the rubber bands. And when I say fascia, we're talking about ligaments, tendons, uh, 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 all the soft tissue that's holding our bones together. Right. And it's under tension. Right. It's just not doing it's not just loose. It's under tension. And I have I, I can attest to that because while I was playing ultimate Frisbee, we're really right. motivated to catch the phrase. It's like Frisbee football. And uh, uh, Frisbee was tossed. Both me and another person were, were running headstrong to catch it. And we happened to end up at the same time in the same place. And while I was outreaching my arm, his whole body slammed into my hand with such force that it popped mm. my bicep tendon. And it felt exactly like a rubber band snapping. Oh my gosh. Right? And what happened when that, ten that connectivity was lost? Loss of power. The good thing, there's two connections to the bicep. So I, heck, I, I didn't lose functionality. I still couldn't move things, but I didn't have the same strength. I had lost one of my rubber bands, one of my, 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 my tensions, I, until it had to be reconnected. So that's an example of how our body is constantly in tension, right? So what does that all have to do with posture, right? Well, if we go back to gravity, when we deal with forces, they have to be in a straight line, right? Yeah. Straight from my head all the way down to the bottom of the, to the center of the earth. So if we do that with our bodies, there's actually a line that runs straight down our body from the ear to the uh -huh. shoulder, to the hip, to the knee, and to the ankle. A straight line. So... We're identifying this as the ideal postural alignment. And this isn't 3D, right? So it's not just sideways. If we take a look on the picture on the right, this also goes for, you know, on two sides, the shoulders, the hips, the knees, and the ankles. A straight, perfect line going through our bodies, which, which distributes the the gravitational pull evenly throughout our body, right? And here we're going back to the concept of balance, evenly, right? Because when we start to have imbalances, then we start to expose certain parts of our body to extra gravitational pulls, right? And we'll talk about that. So... What I like to do is, I like to do a, a quick self postural assessment. If you all bear with me, right? And this is this is the challenge of the, of the type of work I do, right? It's very tactile. I right? like very visual, very tactile. So if every, everyone can stand up, right, let me adjust the camera and see if you can all see me, right? And I know everyone's in different areas, but do the best you can, right? Let's just stand up straight up, right? And I want you to close your eyes, move about, move your feet about, all right? And then stop moving, relax, right? Get yourself into a, a comfortable position, right? And then open your eyes. What I'd like you to do now is to look down at your feet. Right. What we're going to be working right now is postural awareness. 
what I'd like you to do is to take a look at your feet and look to see where are they pointing. You know, where's your big toe pointing? Are both feet pointing in the, right, in the same direction? Are they pointing off to the side or are they pointing off to the, to the middle? Also, something a little bit more subtle is feel your weight distribution. The easiest way to do this is with two scales underneath your feet. But for now, just get a sense. Do you have more weight on one side, on one foot than on the other? Right? Take a feel. You need to bounce back and forth. Go ahead and do that. Okay, now as you move up, take a look at your shoulders. You know, what position are they in? You know, are they a little bit forward? Because the shoulders should be directly underneath your ears. Right, here's, a, here's another way of doing this. All right, this will work for some of you, but not for, depending on where you're at. If you have a wall near you, Go ahead and stand up next to the wall. Put your feet right against the wall so it's touching. And also your back. All right. So the question to ask here, okay, your shoulders are both touching with the same amount of force as, as the other, or is there a difference? And this is a big one. At this point, if your ear is underneath, if your, if your shoulder is right underneath your ear, your head should be touching the wall. So is it? Or is there space in between? One of the things we see a lot of at the clinic is forward head. You know, with, with the use of computers, with the use of cell phones, our heads are starting to move forward. All right, so we've looked at our, we looked at the position of our heads, our shoulder, our hip, our feet, right, to, to gain some awareness about our posture. All right, let's go ahead and back and sit down. Thank you for, for helping me with that. It's not the easiest thing to do. Ideally, the best way to do this is with, if someone takes a picture of you, right, from, from all four sides, and draws lines straight down from your ears down to your ankle. That's how we do postural assessments in the clinic. You know, it becomes very obvious to see, okay, there's some imbalances here. Okay, so did any, all right, so we, we played around with our posture. Did anyone notice anything? Feet pointing outward a little bit. All right, feet pointing outward. Denise, what you notice? Uh, I noticed that uh, my shoulders, I was more uh, forward and my head was not um, against the wall. Okay, awesome. Anybody else? I noticed that my weight was distributed over my right leg and not my left leg at all, and that I could not stand straight up. I leaned forwards from the waist forwards. So that awesome. was really interesting. Yeah. And, and, this, and this is just from, you know, intuition, from visual inspection. Uh, it's easier, I find, with the pictures and the lines. But you guys were really aware about your body and were able to pick that up, right? And we find that once we have this discussion with our clients, once you're, you see it, you can't unsee it right? A conversation now has started with, within your mind and your body. We're like, okay, I've noticed this. Why? I noticed that I, my shoulder was up higher than the, my other shoulder while I was at boot camp, uh, like three years into working out. And I thought it was because one side was stronger than the other. So I spent a year working out the other side out more than the other and tried to compensate, only to find that that had no impact whatsoever because it wasn't about muscle. It was about my posture and the position in my, of my posture. Are you going to talk about the proper position for your feet? So the proper position for your feet. Sure, we can talk about that. So 
when we talk about the body, we look at it as a biomechanical machine, right? When you look at the joints, the joints operate a certain way. You know, it doesn't matter who you are, your knees are just going to flex and extend. They're not going to go sideways. You know, there are some joints that are for mobility, like the ankles and the shoulders, and there are others that are for stability, like your knees. You know, they, they're very stable. When there are imbalances in your muscles, what happens is your posture gets misaligned things start pointing in the wrong direction. If one pair, if one set of muscles is pulling hard, too hard, it's too strong or too tight and pulling on the side of your skeletal system, then what will happen is things get misaligned, rotation occurs. Like the ideal position for your feet is when not your big toe, but your, the toe right next to it is pointing straight forward. Mm right? Your big toe will take 80% of your weight, leaving the, 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 the remaining 20 on your remaining toes, right? So its proper position is that second toe points straight forward. Wow. If that's not pointing forward, you're dealing with rotation from your hip, right? And that is, a, that is something that I had. And let me tell you what the impact was. I noticed very early on that I couldn't run further than three miles before my knees really hurt mm. painfully. Uh, it was like felt bone on bone, like the side of the knee was being hit constantly. And like for the life of me, I couldn't understand why not. I had some body work done by this company, Structural Body Therapy. And afterwards, they aligned my feet so my feet would go forward. Right? And what I noticed ever since then was that I didn't have an issue running past three miles or six or five miles or eight miles. My knees had no problems. Why? Cause my, my feet were brought to the forward before they were like this. So my knees were hitting each other mm. internally. We have, we see people that have their feet pointing this way, feet pointing that way. But when your feet point this way, right, then you're, your, your body is not fighting itself, so it becomes more functional. And that's where the performance comes into, right? I could not perform further than three miles until that was addressed. Once that was addressed, my performance went up, right? So that's how athletic, how posture helps athletic performance. So the question now that, that begs to be answered, answered is why is our bodies why are our bodies misaligned well there's a lot of reasons for that trauma is a good one you know i had a guy that came in he jumped in the, into a pool when he was 13 years old landed on his head hurt his neck and as an adult man his body remembered that trauma to the point where it was crushing his vertebrae and he needed surgery. But by helping him with his posture, we were able to reverse that. Right? Uh, emotions. Right? I'm a big believer, and I think a lot of people on this call uh, feel the same way, between the body-mind connection. Right? One is connected to the other, and they can't be separated. You know, so things that happen in your body happen in your mind and vice versa. So uh, I had a client that uh, was in a, actually two very traumatic accidents. One, her, her hair got caught in a, uh, those uh, uh, buggies and it just yanked her head back, whiplash. Mm -hmm. Right. And then she had another accident where she got, she uh, spun over on an ATV and it landed on her, her body and her neck. So even 10, 15 years later, even though the body had healed, the emotion was still there. The protective emotion. We're like, no, 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 no. Protect the neck. Right. It wasn't obvious. 
work had to be done to, to make, to, to, to work through that. But that is part of the body mind connection. You know, also, you know, it's hard to be happy, right? But then have hunched shoulders, head down and go around moping around and the vice versa, right? It's hard to be sad when you're standing up straight, right? Another body, uh, mind body connection. <sighs> Poor posture is another one. I mean, here we are, here we all are, well, most of us on our computer, right? Typing away, you know, head forward, eight, 10 hours a day in bad position. And you know, we've gotten better about that, especially with our ergonomics, but it's still an issue, you know, walking around, looking at the cell phones, right? Head forward. Here, let me move my camera a little bit down. Stress. Right, that can have an impact on our posture. Illness. Uh, my wife was sick; she had a bad flu, and it imp and it just like dehydrated her, dehydrated her, dehydrated her fascia, and pain came out of nowhere, and then just just got a really tight. Right, and that's. That's a simple form of illness, but there's all the other types of illness that can impact the bone, you know, impact the fascia, the tendons, a numerous amount. Right? So they can have, you know, this congenital scoliosis. Right? That's very impactful. We see that a lot. Right? Repetitive movement. Uh, yeah. Carpal tunnel syndrome. Right? Resting my, my palm, using my mouse, eight, 10 hours a day. When I go to sleep and watch, tea and watch my Kindle, I'm like this for like an hour and a half, mm. creating an imbalance. The biggest uh, reason, the common reason that we see for imbalances, occupation. We have a gentleman that puts up uh, sprinkler pipes. So he gets into very awkward positions so he can stick it in. My, uh, we have military personnel in cars all the time, right? In strange positions, tight positions. So all of these things will impact your posture. And then you get to physically see the impact. All right, here we have, on the left, we have the ideal alignment, right? But as we look at the examples on the right, we see the impact on the spine. One has two, the first one, B, has too much curvature. C, has no curvature, right? See the position of the head, head moving forward, right? And this is just from the side. You'll see a lot more imbalances when you look at through the front. You know, differences, you know, one foot is pointing straight, the other one's off pointing somewhere else, or one shoulder is forward while the other one's in the right position. All right, so that's the awareness to have. Because once you have that awareness, then you start to, one, look at ways how you can undo it. Like if you notice, hey, oh, okay, my head is forward. All right, let me make sure that I'm not walking around looking at my phone. Let me push it back, you know, put it back into position. Because there are things you can do, right? All right, we talked about the awareness, right? We just did a, a very simple and dirty version of a postural assessment, but there are places you can do it. That's something we do in our clinic. Very simple to do, right? Find out what status, wh where are you now posturally, right? And some of you that were able to do that. Now, there are tools that you have available that help, re help, you, re help you move you closer to postural alignment, right? And the reason I say closer is, you know, the body is very adaptive. Even bones are alive and adapt, but they take a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, we deal with clients that are 
congenital scoliosis have had it since they were the age of 13, right? It takes time to help straighten that out. And even then there's still a limit of to where you can go. But the good thing is that that bone does, does heal. It just takes a long time. It takes like seven years, right? But you can still move towards the right direction, towards the postural objective. So you can help with the pain and help with the functionality and help with the performance. And there are systems out there designed to help that, all right? Rolfing method of structural integration is the most effective that I've seen. That doesn't mean that there's not others, but I have personally interacted with that and I've felt the benefits, so that is one. There's also repatterning exercises. And there's exercises you can do, right? Uh, you know, I was thinking about, instead of saying repatterning exercise, I was gonna say exercises. Because for example, Denise does yoga. Uh, we've seen hundreds of people come through our clinic and their postures in all different states, right? Uh, we, we always feel that we can work on, we can help improve their posture. But there was two people that came through and there was n absolutely nothing I can do. They were perfect. And both of them were yogis. <laughs> So, so that tells you something about the power of yoga, All right? So there are certain exercises that help restore the balance into the body. Uh, there are other, like uh, now in our clinic, and if you go, uh, there's a, a system called Egoscue that we use in our clinic. They have a they have like a library of 206 repatterning exercises, and they are very simple exercises, but very targeted towards depending on where the postural uh, imbalance is at, they get right in there and get to work. They look, they look simple, but they're deceptively, deceptively difficult depending on where your muscles are in terms of strength. Like uh, one of my therapists had me do where she had me go on the wall, put my hands there and then just turn them right without picking up the palm of my hand. And I found that to be incredibly hard just for me. Right. One of the things I'm working on is my shoulder position. Right. But uh, they are specifically designed to help restore balance into certain areas. And when we talk about restore balance, we're talking about either making some of your tight muscles relax so they can release that tension and telling other muscles to buck up, get stronger take on more weight, take on more load, so you can restore balance. So it's a two-step method. There's also mobility tools that you can use. There's, um, I don't have any in front of me, but there's uh, balls that you can use to help break up uh, uh, adhesions that are, that are uh, creating a lack of range of mobility. There's, you can do uh, there's fascia smasher. There's, uh, Foam rollers, I've used that enough to, for, for several lifetimes. So mm -hmm. they are things that you can do to help your mobility. Could you give a quick definition of rolfing? Rolfing, I mean, the quick and dirty way I can say is clinical massage, body okay. work, right? The purpose of massage <laughs> is to help relax, right? And there are times when that's important. The help, the, the, the purpose of body work is to actually address an issue. It's a system that was designed by Dr. Ida Rolf, that she was the pioneer in, in, in the, the, the fascia work, right? She wasn't, wasn't she, was, she was a biochemist and she also was a therapist. She found that working on the fascia was very effective. She didn't know why but she only but she did know that it worked and only until recently work, some of the work from by tom myers he published a, a book called anatomy trans where he actually specifically looks at the fascia and where the tension bands go through the body that make it easier for therapists to oh okay now this is what we're seeing and this is how we can work it to promote healing so she started that 70 years ago but only now is the understanding and the science behind it coming out to support it. So it's been, it's been a, a long time, but it's, it's been very impactful. You know, I've been a recipient of the work and it's, 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 
I wouldn't be where I am today without it. Okay. I, I would be in big trouble physically. Okay. Thank you. Absolutely. So benefits of good posture and David, you did an awesome intro explaining the benefits, right? We get to protect the joints, right? Talked about my, my situation where we kept hitting the side of the knee, you know, and had I kept on that course, not knowing what I was doing, I would have permanently damaged them, right? Injury prevention with the increased of flexibility, functionality, you are able to also prevent injury where, where with the lack of mobility, you wouldn't have access to certain movements in certain areas. Now you can, right? You don't have to compensate. You don't have to protect that area. And by, by extension, we get pain relief from that. A lot of pain, the relationship that we want to have with pain is it's the body's way of communicating with us. It's saying, Hey, something's wrong. Right. And the best thing you can do is listen to it, find a solution for it and see why are you not happy? What, what's the problem? And let's address it. You know, our, our current system of medicine will more than happily give you something to quiet that voice. Uh, mm -hmm. But the problem is the problem's still there, right? You basically told your body to shut up. <laughs> you know, I still got to go to work. I still have to do my, 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 my things. Right. But the problem's still there. Right. We want to change that relationship. We want to listen to the body and see what we're doing. Right. Like just like we did, we, we, we now have an awareness on our posture and we can understand, okay, Oh, I see there's an imbalance, right? That starts a conversation. Right. And we talked about the improved athletic performance. You know, this is improving your posture is an easy way to increase performance. We do it with cross, CrossFit athletes all the time. You know, if you're lifting up weights and you're lifting them over here because you don't have the range of motion to put it over here, well, guess what? You're hanging out with your buddy Gravity and he's making the work harder for you. The simple act of moving it here straight, straight above your head, now you're in line with Gravity. Now you're putting the load on your skeletal system. That's a 10, 15 percent boost in your best record, right? And that's attractive to athletes. All right, so that was my last slide. What I wanted to take a moment to talk about now is, so we talked about physical health. What does this have to do with our other pillars, right? Because we still have we, we, talk, we, talk, we have emotional. We have mental health, we have social and spiritual. Well, the emotional, you know, we talked about our goals that we're trying to accomplish. And when I was doing boot camp and I got injured and I wasn't able to continue to go, that had an impact on me emotionally because I was not able to work out anymore. Right. So when you compare me working out to my version of me not working out, which one do you think I like better? <laughs> right. And that's the same way with us. We each have goals. Right. If for any reason our body is not able to support us, that's going to have an impact, a negative impact. We want to stay proactive because of, uh, you know, ounce of, of prevention is worth a pound of cure. And these are simple steps. There are simple exercises that you can do to help with your posture. Right? And just because I was able to work out with my friends and be fit, that, that helped me mentally. Right? It helped me mentally be ready for the day. You know, like I said, uh, I use working out as a way to manage stress and stay fit. And that prepared me for the day because I had a lot of challenges at work. You know, a lot of things that we had to deal with, projects, and you want to be at your best mental state when doing that. Uh, and think about your goals. You know, a lot of that involve other people. You know, there's a social aspect to it. Hey, can you come on down and visit us down uh, in this state, you know, in Nebraska, and we're going to go take a hike, and we're going to go to this 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 awesome restaurant 
Well, your body has to be able to support it. Oh, no, I can't go. I got a headache, right? Why do you have a headache? Forward head, mm. putting pressure, pressure from your shoulders, pulling down on your head. Your body's doing, your back is doing 20, 30% more work, right? Because it's about efficiency as well. When you're in postural alignment, that is the least amount of energy that your body needs to operate. Any deviation from that, you know, forward head, forward shoulders, now I have extra gravel to, uh, gravitational stress, right? Now my body's being pulled down. I have to work extra. So we need to be able to stay healthy so that we can keep operating and continue to be social and do the things that we love to do with the people we love to do. Be it hiking, being picking up your grandkids, you know, we need our bodies in good shape for that. And, you know, spiritual, you know, David can attest to this, you know, and a lot of you can too, you know, it's, it's awesome to be out in nature, but it has a physical demand. You, you got to pay a price to get up there, right? Uh, I've tried to summit Mount Charles a couple of times and my body wasn't able to, uh, but there's a joy once getting up there. And the beauty you get to see and the feeling that you get that has an impact on you spiritually, right? So all of these calms are important. You can't, you can't ignore one or two and rely on the other three or rely on just one and hope the other four take care of themselves. You know, it's a question of taking care of all five of them. So that basically... If you think of Maslow's triangle, where um, where physical needs have to be met before you can go to the higher needs, As right? Your physical needs aren't being met. You're not going to get to the uh, mental, emotional, social, and spiritual. You just won't get there because you're too busy dealing with pain. So that's that's a real good point. Yeah, you got to take care of the basics. Well, Gus, that is awesome. Uh, now I'm not only going to be sitting up straight, but I'm going to be watching where my feet are pointed and yes. also thinking about Mr. Trail Runner. <laughs> uh, I, well, yeah, definitely. I, I've got some things I need to look at, um, but but definitely uh, it's it's good to be aware and to know there's this simple test that affects so much of of our health. You know, just to just to be aware. Okay, with that in mind, I want to get to the, the second part of the, the webinar, which is, is basically let's, let's check in with each other. And um, I'd, li I'd like to you know, think, think in terms of a goal that you have. You, know, you look at your current health and think in terms of optimal health and navigating the gap. Now, I know Gus and I, on the first night of this webinar, both identified energy, um, low energy, as an issue. And we'd like to increase our energy. Others identified um, sleep, you know, lack of sleep. Uh, you know, some identified weight. And, and so I want you to think, just for a moment, what is a goal you would like to achieve? What would you like to, uh, what would be different if you were at your optimal health in some specific area than where your current health is currently? Um, and, and where you see a gap. And, you know, for me, it is, it is low energy in the afternoons, evenings especially, my energy goes way down. You know, I'm tired of that happening. And, and I'm looking for help in increasing my energy, especially later in the day. I'm like a, a, you know, a candle that goes down as, as the day goes on. What other goals, uh, what, what goals do you others have on the webinar? Um, we've got, you know, Denise 
Loya, Bob, Holly, and Stan, and Tyler, Angela, Denise Thomas, um, number of people here on this webinar. And I just like to give you an opportunity just to think in terms of one specific goal that that you have where there's a gap between your current health and where you'd like to be does anyone want to chime in well i will um i had said in the first webinar that uh one of mine was to um concentrate more on specific yoga postures that has been challenging for me and a lot of the time it's been challenging because of uh, tight muscles or um, having, I guess, maybe built up emotions and tension. And I have worked on that by reducing uh, my stress level mm. and doing proper breathing initially and really focusing on the area that is tight and breathing through it and doing and keep and holding that for so long and i have noticed that in the last couple of weeks it has been more uh more time i have been holding the posture and then also less pain and which i know then the energy is flowing better so by me doing this every morning and dedicating myself to 15 20 minutes on a certain posture i have really felt the difference and yes because if my neck was hurting so is my low back or my hip yes it is all related and i do believe in that okay so it looks like we have a, a pattern first of all there's awareness awareness of of this gap between where you are where you'd like to be and then action awareness and action and and you did something specific who else would like to report on a goal and where they'd like to you know where they are now where they'd like to be well i would like to chime in on this and where i'm at currently is i have a lot of lumbar disc issues and i'm getting a bilateral uh spinal epidural tomorrow because i can't stand up straight i lean forwards uh, I have a narrow spinal canal, uh, which is also pinching my nerves. So if I were at optimal health, I would be doing 5Ks and half marathons, which I've tried to train for before. <laughs> but, okay. when you can't, but when you can't walk a half a mile without excruciating pain, it really interferes. So I've been trying to do some core, um, core work. I went to Gus's place of business, actually, and had some work done there. And so I'm doing some home exercises from that. Uh, so I'm just trying to do, you know, meet with my doctor and my pain management team and try to just kind of push myself, you know, work on issues to get there. Uh, that's where I'd really love to be is just to walk anywhere I want rather than have every, everywhere I go in the last year and a half is based on how far I can walk. Okay. So I just want to be able to have that freedom of walking as much as I want. Okay, well, I'm writing this down and we'll check back in with you next week, Loya. And also, um, you know, feel free, anyone who has an immediate answer to any of these um, issues that are brought up, um, feel free to share. Um, how about you, Holly? Goal. She may, a, she may, I'm unmuting. I'm okay, good, 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 good. Oh, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think as I'm listening to this, and um, I wasn't on the first um, one, so I didn't hear that we were to actually make goals. And, and I'm in really good health, and I feel good. I have a lot of energy. Um, I get enough sleep. I, I really had to kind of look, but I'm getting older. And you know, I'm in my 60s now, so I'm I'm like starting to lose muscle mass. Mm. And I haven't really noticed so much about it uh, being a problem for me. Um, but 
I can tell that I'm losing muscle mass. And so for me, it's probably, that would probably be a goal that I would have is to be able to build more muscle. And, okay. and maybe so that would involve probably some weight lifting. Some yoga would also be doing, actually doing something more consistently. <laughs> I do hike, I do walk, I do, uh, I, I do ride my bicycle, but I would have to say it's pretty inconsistent at this point. And that's because I've been focusing on work. So. Um, yeah, that's that's where it is for me. Okay, um, excellent, and and definitely in in my webinar in a few weeks, we'll be talking about motivation and and you know how to create that and and make it so that it comes more natural, and and we'll we'll focus on that. Okay, um, anyone can else? Can I add in? Yeah, can I add? Can I add something to what Holly was just talking about? Yes, definitely. Because when I was doing the research for my presentation, I was looking at the challenges that astronauts have to go through. Right? One of the, 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 the symptoms of lack of gravity that they come across is the loss of muscle mass. Mm. Uh, and their solution is basically what she just said, you know, the addition of resistance, the addition of weights, mm -hmm. right? There's a, there's a lot of studies done for for as we mature the the advantage of doing weightlifting uh putting extra weight on our because with the astronauts what they were experiencing the lack of was the loss of 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 bone den density and of 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 their muscle mass and it was because the weight wasn't there what basically it's basically is use it or lose it right and they weren't using it in space right so that's if, from what you've mentioned, you you got the you got it all figured out. And you got the plan already set. Okay, well, um, our time has come to an end, and and we could definitely go on longer than this because I, I would love to have time to hear more of our goals that that we set. And I'd like to encourage everyone here to set a goal. Bring that goal next week. We'll create a little more time at the end of the webinar. Um, hopefully the last 15 minutes we'll, we'll just devote toward hearing your goals and supporting each other. But for this week, create a goal, look at your current health and your um, optimal health in that one area, and then where is the gap? Just be aware this week create awareness and uh, next week we'll take that a little further speaking of next week uh, we have on this page on, on my trail running site is is our is a health education link uh, right over on the on the far right and it opens up this uh, page where you have a registration for the upcoming webinar. You need to register each week for this webinar. So definitely go to this page, lasvegasareatrails.com slash health education, um, hit the registration button. And in, in a, a few days, maybe, maybe as early as tomorrow, but it may be Friday, I will have the, uh, the recording of today's webinar. Here, we've got our first session, second session. You will see where there's an article. You can click on the title there. And what that's gonna do, is speedily working there right now, is it'll go to the full article. And you'll see the, the actual um, recording of that webinar. You can, you can, go over it again if you like and also what i'll do is is i'll put some notes down below that so you can kind of skim through and see these notes of of gus's amazing webinar and if you miss denise's um, and our introductory webinar you can see those also so with that having been said thank you everyone for being present tonight we wish you your best health and look forward to moving in that direction through this summer. We're here to help you. Okay, thank you.